Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video and we are continuing on chapter 8 and we will be looking at section 8.2 today on compound interest focusing on future value. In the next video we will be um, looking at present value but we'll stick to future value for this video. <laughs> Here's the chapter outline again and uh, we are doing compound interest future value and you can find extra practice questions on pages 490 to 492 after the video. Here's our success criteria. We want to learn and understand compound interest just like we did with simple interest and we want to understand the different compound, uh, compounding periods which we'll get to what that is um, in the next slide and we want to learn the formula for compound interest and for future value. So first off, let's go over some definitions we should understand. Compound, compound interest is interest added to the principal, right, we're here. Uh, compound interest is interest added to the principal before new interest earned is calculated. This means that interest is calculated on the principal, but also on the interest already earned. So this interest is paid or earned at regular time periods called compounding periods, which is in the next definition. So in um, comparison to simple interest, where we only took the fraction off of only the principal value, now each year we're taking a fraction or each compounding period, uh, we're taking a fraction of the principal value and the uh, interest that's already earned. So what is a compounding period? A compounding period is an interval at which interest is calculated. The most common compounding periods are annually, which is interest is earned every every year, which is what we've been working on uh, with so far. Then we have semi-annually, which is you earn interest twice a year. Then you have quarterly, so you earn interest four times a year. And monthly, you earn interest every month, 12 times a year. So interest will be earned however many times in a year the compounding period tells us. Lastly, we have future value, and this is the total amount of an investment after a certain length of time. So this is basically the same as amount for simple interest, but now we're working with compound interest, so we use the name future value, which has the same variable as amount in A. Here are some facts we should know about compound interest and future value. So compound interest, again, is calculated by applying the interest rate the principal and any interest already earned as i've said the total amounts at the end of each interest period form a geometric sequence so it gives us a exponential growth um, when we use compound interest because if you think about it we are adding money to our account every compounding period and every compounding period since we're adding money to our account the fraction even though the interest rate may not change the total amount that we have in our accounts changes and we're taking the interest rate the fraction off of whatever value we have right now off of that amount right we're taking a fraction off of that amount instead of the principal value so if our principal sorry if our yeah if our if our initial amount increases right our fraction that we increase increase by also increases and so we're going to exponentially grow and lastly, the total amount A of an investment after a certain period is called the future value of the investment, as I've already said before. We are using future value instead of amount. Now let's look at the formula for future value, which is the amount of money in our account after so many compounding periods. So the future value, which we represent with A, equals the principal times one plus our interest rate to the power of n, which is the number of compounding periods. And I here, it's a little different, which I'll explain in later slides, uh, but I'll explain uh, kind of how it works a little bit because we're used to saying, for example, we are earning interest at 6%, right? So we just multiply the principal value by the 6%. But since 
compounding periods can be annually or semi-annually or quarterly and all those things. If, for example, because we're usually given the 6% interest rate per year, so annually. So if we are doing quarterly um, compounding periods, right, we're not earning 6% every three months, which is what quarterly means. We're earning interest every three months. So what we have to do is divide the 6% by four. So we're dividing our 0 0.06 by four and then multiplying this to our amount at that point, to our principal, right? So our I is actually going to be this, right? If we're working with quarterly or semi-annually, semi-annually, this would be a two, right? Or monthly, this would be a 12. It depends what we're working with. Or if it's just annually, we're working with 0 0.06 because usually we're giving interest on an annual basis. So we're earning that 6% every year. But if we're earning interest, every three months, we can apply that 6% every three months. So we apply a quarter of that 6%, right? Which is 1.5%. So we basically have an interest rate of 1.5% per compounding period, if that makes sense. So let's continue. Now let's look at the compound interest formula, which is a bit more complex than the simple interest formula. We have our total interest which is equal to our future value minus our principal, which makes sense because, for example, if we're doing an, invest, an investment of five years and we invest $2,000 and by the end of five years, we have $3,000, our interest earned is going to be obviously a thousand, right? In this case. So this future value will be 3,000 minus this principal value, which will be 2,000 which will give us our total interest earned, which will be a thousand. So that makes sense, right? So that will equal our longer formula, which we derive from plugging in our future value formula, which we just saw, which is P times big bracket and then smaller bracket one plus uh, the interest rate, which again, I explained how we calculate it all to the power of n, which is our compounding period, minus 1. So all we did here is we plugged in to a, we plugged in p times 1 plus i to the n, right, the formula we just looked at in the last slide. And since we have a p here and a p here, we just factor it out, and we're left with all this in the brackets. So that's our compound interest formula. And let's move on. Before we get to our example, um, I just wanted to go over the common compounding periods that I mentioned and how interest works and how the number of uh, compounding period works. So here we have the type of compounding periods on the left. And here it kind of explains how many times interest is earned. And here is what I was talking about with interest. I is usually given as an annual interest rate, meaning you earn interest every year. That's the percent it gives you in most questions or in most life applications, right? So if we are doing a semi-annually, right, compound interest, our interest, our I, is going to be our annual interest divided by two because we are earning money every six months. So we're going to split that annual interest rate into two. So if it, our annual interest rate is 6%, we're going to earn 3% after six months and 3% after the other three months, right? And our number of compounding periods, if it's just annually, we have one compounding period, which is just our number of years, right? If we have two compounding periods, because we're earning money again every six months, so each time we earn money, that's a compounding period. It's gonna be the number of years times two if we are doing semi-annually because after a whole year passes, we're going to have done two compounding periods. So we're just going to take the year and multiply by two to get the number of compounding periods. And we're going to do this <laughs> with every type of compounding uh, period type. So quarterly, we're going to have four compounding periods because we're multiplying the number of years by four. We're earning money four times a year. And monthly, we're getting interest 12 times a year. So we're going to multiply each year by 12, right? 
and our annual again we do the same thing if we are talking quarterly we earn money every three months we're gonna split that interest rate into four parts right so we're gonna divide it by four and if it's for example eight percent that we earn in the year we have an eight percent annual interest rate <laughs> we're gonna earn two percent every three months so we're gonna split it into two percent and that's what we'll get for i and for monthly again for example if we have 12 percent per year if we we're gonna divide that annual interest rate by 12 so we'll get a one percent interest rate every month now let's go over this example to see how these formulas kind of work it says lara's lara's yeah i think that's lara's lara's grandparents invested five thousand dollars at 4.8 percent annually remember we got to be careful with that annually because now it says uh the, uh, her grandparents invested five thousand dollars at 4.8 percent annually compounded quarterly meaning we earn interest every three months four times a year when she was born they invested this money when she was born how much will the investment be worth on her 25th birthday so we want to use our uh, future value equation because we want to see how much it's worth after 21 years right from when she was born to her 25th birthday so again our future value formula so our a formula is going to be our present value our principal sorry times one plus our interest rate times our number of compounding periods right so from here we want to figure out n our comp a number of compounding periods our i our interest rate and our p our principal value our principal value is given right in the question this 5000 is going to be our p but i is not 4.8 percent remember as i said in the last slide we got to calculate for i i is going to equal right our annual annual interest rate divided depending on the compounding pe period type which is quarterly this time so we're going to divide by four we're going to split this 4.8 percent in four parts because we're earning interest every three months right four times a year so i is actually going to be our annual interest rate which is 4.8 we can convert to 0 0.048 divided by four which is just going to give us 12 or sorry 0 0.012 and that will be our i now to deal with n if you remember from the last slide our n value is going to equal our number i should really put the should have really put this in brackets there you go number of years times uh times our times our number of um compounds per year right compounding periods per year and since we're doing quarterly we're going to multiply by four because we earn money again uh, we earn interest four times that year each year so our n is actually going to be 21 right because the number of years we go through is 21 times 4 so our n is going to equal 84 okay now we can plug everything into our equation so our future value is going to equal p which is 5000 times 1 plus our interest which is 0 0.012 to the power of 84 which is our number of compounding periods so from when she's born to her 25th birthday there's going to be 84 compounding periods that account that her grandparents invested in is going to earn interest 84 times so our future value will be 1 plus 0 0.012 to the power of 84 times 5000 which is going to give us about 13,000 
$618.62. Therefore, the investment investment will be worth $13,618.62 on her 25th birthday. And that's it. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and make sure you keep practicing.